I got this video idea from a tweet I produced months ago. Big Whoop, wanna fight about it? Readers, the practice of continuing a movie or a television show in the form of a comic book series has been a thing since that one good thing that Joss Whedon decided to do with his life. And shows and movies based on characters from DC Comics were no exception to this treatment. Proof of this is with Batman 66, which continue the campy mid-60s adventures of the live-action Batman series starring the late Adam West. And who could forget the comic book continuation of Clark's Creek? But in February of 2021, news broke about two more DC cinematic experiences getting a comic book extension, Richard Donner's Superman and Tim Burton's Batman. Respectively called Superman 78 and Batman 89, the digital first books will be exploring stories told after Superman the movie and both Batman and Batman Returns in which the latter will be written by Sam Hamm, the screenwriter of the gothic classics himself. And with Hamm returning, that means a lot of us Burton Batman fans are finally going to get a chance to see story elements we always wanted to see before the late Joel Schumacher and writers Lee and Janet Scott Batchelor replaced Burton and Hamm for Batman Forever. <laughs> Including the debut of Billy D. Williams' Two-Face, an actual Burton vs. Robin, and the possible return of Michelle Pfeiffer's Selena Kyle that was teased at the end of Batman Returns. Now, if you've seen my video essay celebrating the 30 year anniversary of Batman 1989, then you know that everything I just uttered is exactly my cup of tea. <laughs> I doubt it's going to be the initial version of Batman Forever that Sam and Tim initially planned for the third movie, but considering that at least the first arc is gonna cover some loose ends the Schumacher films never really covered or completely rewrote, I'm down for when this is released in late July of 2021. But with the news dropping that we're eventually going to be returning to this version of Gotham in comic book form, it got me thinking, let's, for the fun of it, pretend that Warner Brothers let Tim Burton and Sam Hamm collab on more Batman movies after Returns. By now, we know Tim Burton's evolution of his style, but more specifically, we know his go-to actors and actresses that more than likely would have shown up. And those performers are Johnny Depp, his at-the-time partner, Helena Bonham Carter, and the late, great Christopher Lee. And while trying to figure out who Johnny and Helena would have ended up portraying next to Michael Keaton's Batman is a task in its own right, I feel that the casting of Christopher Lee, who was in his late 60s around the time the third Batman movie was in pre-production, would have been a challenge on its own accord. <laughs> Especially since as one of the grandfathers of horror and one of Tim Burton's cinematic idols alongside Vincent Price, who died after Edward Scissorhands, it would be safe to assume that he would more than likely play a villain. So with that in mind, which Batman villain would Christopher Lee have played if Burton and Ham were still making the movies? Now, I asked this question to my followers on Twitter months before DC Comics made the announcement of continuing Tim and Sam's Batman universe in comic book form. And the two most popular answers made so much sense. Like you, 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 you wouldn't even know. So let's start with this one out of all the villains Christopher Lee could have played in another Tim Burton directed Batman movie, one of them could have been Hugo Strange. I think Hugo's mad scientist angle would be a very appropriate callback to Lee's horror days, especially if one of the comic inspirations for the story was the giants of Hugo Strange. The story is the second out of four in Batman issue one and his first appearance since showing up in Detective Comics 36. In it, 
Hugo experiments with a bunch of inmates in Arkham that turn them into 10 foot tall monster men that wreak havoc on Gotham City and it's up to Batman to stop them. That story got hugely expanded upon and fleshed out by Matt Wagner back in 2006, who wrote the six part Batman and the Monster Men as the first arc of two in his Dark Moon Rising duology in 2006. The second one being Batman and the Mad Monk, which retold a couple of Batman's first real bouts with metahumans and supernatural villains in his career set during Frank Miller's year one continuity. But even just comparing the character to the stories we actually got before the Nolan trilogy, the angle of Hugo learning Batman's true identity that's utilized in every comic, video game, and animated series adaptation of the character plays so well with Edward Nigma's plot device, The Box, from Batman Forever. It almost makes me wish that the Dark Moon Rising series existed during that time, because both Batman and the Monster Men and the second story, Batman and the Mad Monk, could honestly be combined into a pretty amazing story that I could definitely see Burton and Ham having fun adapting for on screen. Keeping Lee's version of Hugo Strange, the main villain, would have been easy for Ham to handle, instead of forcing him to share the screen with the Monk, considering Hugo's creation of the Monster Man and Monk's motive to create an army of werewolf women are pretty similar to each other. Honestly, if I were doing it, I'd make the Mad Monk be the patient zero responsible for Hugo creating the Monster Man serum, give Hugo the monk's Hungarian castle and make the monk be one of Hugo's strongest thralls, since the mad monk is literally a vampire. It would have even given Tim Burton a lot to work with in regards to gothic tones and settings, definitely similar to how macabre certain set pieces and designs were in the Sleepy Hollow movie he made in 1999. Like, imagine the castle in question being a hybrid style of the Headless Horseman tree and the Inventor's House from Edward Scissorhands. That would have been right up Burton's alley. Speaking of which, I could definitely picture Lee taking inspiration for his Hugo Strange from Colin Clive's portrayal of Henry Frankenstein from the Universal Pictures production of the story in 1931. God, the more, the more I think about this, the more I wish this actually happened. And this isn't even my dream casting for a Burton Batman movie with Christopher Lee. Because the villain I would have loved to have seen him play in a Burton directed ham written Batman movie is Raish Al Ghul. <laughs> I know that people would immediately go to his portrayal of Saruman in the Lord of the Rings trilogy as to why he would have been a perfect race. And trust me, I agree. But there are two more roles during his younger years that I would immediately add to his portfolio. Francisco Scalamanga from the Bond film, The Man with the Golden Gun, and of course, his portrayal of Dracula in the Hammer Horror film series. Lee's Dracula had the gravity, poise, and presence that I usually associate with Raish ever since I was initially introduced to him. And Lee's Scalamanga has the confidence, attitude, and arrogance. Add that to his more recent villainous roles before his passing, like the previously mentioned Saruman, and even Count Dooku from the Star Wars prequels. Surely you can do better. And Christopher Lee would have been the perfect live action equivalent to David Warner's portrayal of him in Batman the Animated Series. Now, I know some people are going to wonder about this, so let me just address this now. Yes, I completely understand that one of the things people couldn't stand about Nolan's version of the character in Batman Begins was that he was depicted as a white man instead of being Arabic. I also know that what I previously stated both reinforces the unpopular opinion of white people playing roles initially made for people of color and somewhat goes against my belief of being fine with racial fluidity in certain roles if their ethnicity and background aren't key aspects in their character. And Raish 
being Arabic is indeed part of his character. This casting choice was based on the standards of Hollywood as they were in the early to mid 90s, when a third Batman movie written by Sam Hamm and directed by Tim Burton would have actually happened. And if you think the practice of Hollywood letting white folk claim roles for people of color is bad now, <laughs> let me tell you that it was a completely different beast back then. Like the best that we could hope for back then was that whichever white actor got said role, they had the pedigree to make that bitch outstanding. And if Burton and Ham were able to make another Batman flick with Raish as a villain, casting Christopher Lee would have definitely been the best case scenario. But that's not to say that he couldn't have played other Batman villains and knock those performances out of the water. Another one that was suggested and that I can definitely see is Victor Freeze. Like, can't you imagine? <laughs> as a matter of fact, that's your homework assignment for the day, readers. <laughs> Write in the comments section below which villain you think Christopher Lee would have played if Tim Burton and Sam Hamm were given the opportunity to make another Batman film before his passing. Or if you feel like sharing with the rest of the class, a Batman role you can see another one of Burton's go-to actors playing if given the same opportunity. Whichever one you decide to answer, I'd love to know your thoughts. If you want to help financially support the channel, you can join my Patreon by clicking the card at the end of the video or in the link in the description down below, where you can also find a link to my merchandise store. Or if you prefer to give a one-time donation, you can find links to my PayPal and my coffee account in the description box as well. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and every other Friday. But until then, this is Redis 101. Class dismissed.